which you guys today we're taking a look at the top five reasons Windows 11 failed to deliver. So we're going to be exploring the core issues that have prevented it from becoming the definitive operating system many anticipated. So are you still scratching your head wondering why Windows 11 never quite clicked? You're not alone. Despite all of the anticipation, this operating system just hasn't reached the widespread adoption everyone expected. So we're going to be diving deep into the core issues. So if we take a look at the desktop market share, Windows 11 only holds 55%, whereas Windows 10 is still holding 41% of the market. And yet it's the end of life of Windows 10. One of the big problems was that the system requirements for Windows 11 has literally caused major issues for a lot of people with older hardware. And we're not talking thousands of computers, we're talking millions of computers that didn't reach the strict hardware requirements that Microsoft put in place for you to officially use Windows 11. This means if your computer didn't have TPM 2.0 or didn't support Secure Boot or UEFI, this meant these people could not upgrade to Windows 11. Also, you had other reasons like CPU compatibility. It had to be on the CPU compatible list. And this made a lot of older computers non-compatible for Windows 11. And this really put millions of people that had older hardware unable to upgrade to Windows 11. And of course, with Windows 10 reaching end of life, it left a lot of people with some difficult decisions to make. Yes, you could extend for one more year. And yes, Linux was an option for people, but let's face it, not everyone wants to migrate over to Linux and use a completely different operating system when they've been so used to Windows for so many years. And this moves us on to Windows updates. Now, Windows 11 updates were plagued with glitches and also bugs and other major issues post-launch. Whereas Windows 10 continued to offer stable operating system with a familiar experience, whereas Windows 11 was completely different. And Microsoft that continued to roll out updates for this particular operating system just seemed to make things worse. They were fixing problems and then breaking three or four other problems in the process. And this was an ongoing thing. There's a major problem right now in Windows 11 25 H2, where every single time you open up the task manager and close it up, it will duplicate itself. And this is taking precious resources from your memory and your CPU. And I made a video about this the other day. So check that out. It's pretty bad. And what it is, is it means you have to come in here manually and end task for all of these uh, task managers that have been created by just opening and closing Task Manager. Now, how long is this going to be before Microsoft fix it? And this is just a string of problems that has plagued Windows 11 over the years. So people and companies were hesitant about upgrading to Windows 11. The next thing was the Start menu. It's an absolute monstrosity. You've only got to look at it. Coming from Windows 10, people prefer the Windows 10 look. They completely changed the uh, start menu for Windows 11. And I've completely turned a lot of these features off to make it as reasonable as possible, but you can't resize it. You can't do anything with it. Now they have rolled out an update finally for the start menu, but really it's not that great. It's just even bigger than what it was before. It takes up virtually the whole screen. So this is what you get inside the start menu options you can go more pins default or more recommendations and there's a couple of rocker buttons in here to turn on and turn off and this is why people turn to programs like windhawk start 11 from stardock and they also use other applications like OpenShell, which used to be called classic shell and some people will even use programs like start all back which will change the menu completely and this is because they don't want to be dealing with this particular start menu. The next big problem for Windows 11 was AI. Basically, Microsoft have gone down the AI route with Copilot and other uh, integrations into their operating system. And a lot of people just simply don't want it. I turned it off and uninstalled it, but they've put it absolutely everywhere. 
it's in Notepad, it's in Paint, it's on your desktop, it's in your browser, it's everywhere. And people just simply don't want it. Now, if you want to use AI, you can go to ChatGPT or any of the other websites out there on the internet. Do you need to have a button on your laptop that opens up a Copilot? Probably not, but some people might use Copilot, but I simply just don't need it. And I uninstall it. And I think that gets back to the point where Microsoft don't allow you to completely remove all of the Copilot from your system. It's embedded in Edge. It's embedded just about everywhere on the operating system. And some people might not want it and they want a choice to be able to remove it. So yes, it might be a useful thing for some people, but for the majority of people, they simply don't want it and they would rather have a choice where they can opt out and remove it from the PC. Some people are worried about the amount of data that's being harvested from it, from your computer, with the telemetry, and it's just a big turnoff for a lot of people. And this is why people stay with Windows 10. Moving on to the next big problem, which is the amount of bloat that comes with Windows 11. When you basically install Windows 11, there is a ton of apps that are already pre-installed on the system and people have to go through and remove all of this. And then there's tons of privacy concerning settings inside uh, Windows 11 where you have to go in and toggle a lot of this stuff off. And people just get tired of having to do this and they get reset every time there's a Windows update. There's widgets and gadgets installed on Windows 11 like this right here that no one really wants. I turn this off straight away. But again, some people may use it. I particularly don't want to use it. If I want to read the news, I'll go and look at a news website on the internet. But there's adverts plastered everywhere in Windows 11. And in the search, when you search, it comes up with internet search inside your search. And I think there's a lot of things that people have to go through to turn a lot of this stuff off. There's a lot of telemetry and harvesting of your information. And you have to constantly go in here and toggle all of the buttons off. And pretty much most of the stuff inside here will be turned off. Most people don't leave all of it on. You can see advertisement ID, suggestions, recommendations. There's inking and typing, as you can see here. There's tons of stuff to which is harvesting uh, your information. Notifications, you have to go in here and turn all of this stuff off. I don't know anyone who uses any of this stuff in Windows 11, and it's just time consuming. This is why applications and scripts are available to run on your system to deblow and turn off a lot of settings because of the amount of time it takes. Next, you've got your taskbar. This was a, another big problem. People wanted to put their taskbar on the side or at the top. And of course, because you've got all of the widgets and other stuff that Microsoft have introduced, you have to only have it in the center or to the left. That is it. Microsoft don't want you putting it on the side or up the top. Some people have been using it that way for many, many years. And of course, they are now forced to use it on the left or in the center. Some people even complain of the amount of clicks it takes to get to a location where it used to take one or two clicks. It probably takes five or six for certain items. Next up, we've got the Microsoft account being forced on people during the setup phase. People want to have an option to be able to use an offline local account but now Microsoft are insisting that during the out-of-box experience, you have to sign in with a Microsoft account. And of course, as soon as you sign into a Microsoft account during the setup phase of Windows 11, you will be turning on BitLocker. You'll be signing into a uh, OneDrive account, which will obviously sync all of your data to OneDrive automatically. And they're saying that you can go into a local account once you get to the desktop. You just have to sign in to a Microsoft account during the Windows 11 setup phase. And most people don't want to do that. They want to set up a local account during the setup phase rather than being forced to sign into a Microsoft account. And this also goes on to the context menu, which is also another big problem because people just simply don't like the new context menu and the navigation system of Windows 11. Yes, the UI does look a little bit more fancy, but again, it's just so much inside here and it sometimes is pretty difficult to find things because of the amount of 
stuff in here which you never ever use. And people just want a stable operating system and Windows 11 is not. That's the big problem. And the biggest problem of all was Windows Recall. It caused a major concern. This is a Copilot Plus laptop and you can see Recall and Snapshots click to do is right there on the system. It's embedded into here, but that's because this system has an MPU processor. And if you don't want to opt into Recall and Snapshots, which is snapshot in everything you do on your PC, and yes, it's encrypted and stored locally on your PC, people have the fear that it's being sent back to Microsoft and they simply just don't want it on the PC. So you have to go through and turn this off. Now, as a service, it's not fully functional on a standard Windows 11 operating system, but you can go in and turn this off. It's not running as it would on a Copilot Plus PC, but some people feel the need to have to turn this off just in case it is screenshotting stuff and sending stuff back. But like I said, you will need to have a Copilot Plus PC for it to actually work and start taking snapshots of what you're doing on your computer and storing them in a encrypted folder on your PC. And this will work on a standard Windows 11 system that doesn't have an MPU processor. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to turn that service off to disabled. It's there for people when they install it onto a Copilot Plus PC. It will automatically set it up for you and turn it on and get it ready if you opt in for it because it is an option to opt in or opt out on a Copilot Plus PC. Now, why you'd want to buy a Copilot Plus PC with all this on there, I'm not so sure. But basically, it's disabling it is quite simple. Microsoft have let you have the option to opt out and disable this feature if you don't want it. And this was a major turnoff for a lot of people. It blew up all over the internet. People were just really outraged with the idea of Windows Recall, of capturing and snapshotting what you're doing on your PC. So if you're one of those people, then maybe a Copilot Plus PC is definitely not for you. The big problem is with Windows 10 reaching end of life, those people that have a computer that is compatible for Windows 11 are not going to really have much of an option going forward apart from using Linux. And Linux just doesn't work for everyone, and that's the big problem. Uh, so as it stands up right now, you may be forced to upgrade to Windows 11 or use Windows 11 at some point because Windows 10 will reach a time where it's not going to be supported anymore and the only options available are Windows 11 or Windows 12 and Windows 12 is probably not going to be any better than Windows 11 for AI. It's going to probably be even more embedded into the operating system and of course you have Linux and Mac OS and other options available. Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members, whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three support. I really do appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Let me know what you think of Windows 11. Some of the things that really get under your skin about Windows 11. I'll be interested to read your comments. Anyway, that's going to be about it. I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.